Hey, Kevin, what's up? I know you guys were waiting for me to do or air my um, Run It Back with Brit, which I air every Thursday at 11 a.m., but I decided to do it live today because I saw how much you guys liked the live I did last week. It did way better than <laughs> Run It Back with Brit did last week, so here I am doing a live Run It Back with Brit. Let's see how that works out. Hey, Niles, what's up? So we're gonna do a live run it back with Brit and see how you guys like this. It's not gonna be like a show show, but um, I might as well um, talk about some things. So I know you guys saw the title of um, me talking about the playing game, which I will get to, but uh, I wanna talk about something else first. So, um, Thing. Okay, so I was like reading Twitter and there was this tweet from Adam Schefter and he was like, um, Broncos offensive tackle Juwan James, James's contract told last year, so he was playing under his 2020 contract this year, which had 10 million guaranteed for skill and injury and another 10 million in 2021. So that's, it's a $20 million potential torn Achilles injury today, which was um, two days ago. Um, so if you guys don't know about the story, um, the uh, Broncos offensive tackle, Jawan um, James, basically was working out uh, off season, which all the players do. I don't know if you guys have ever watched Russell Wilson's, Odell's, Patrick Mahomes. Everybody works out off season because that is the only way that they can possibly stay in shape for during the season and, and to get ready and prepared for the season if they didn't actually work out in the off season and they just showed up on like you know freaking first day of OTAs and they're like hey coach I'm here they're gonna get cut because they're not gonna be in shape so this player was doing what he was supposed to be doing which was working out in the off season and because he was not at the facility he tore his um and, and he tore his ACL or his Achilles I'm sorry um, he might miss out now on $20 million. Like, Broncos, you guys better pay this guy. Like, I can't even believe it. Even um, Patrick Mahomes messaged about it. He tweeted about it, and he was just like, so they are going to take away his contract for working out in the offseason? Yeah. And we all know Patrick Mahomes got in trouble that one time for even playing basketball. Um in the off season and now it's like in his contract he can't even play basketball but like doing football workouts you are <coughs> they are literally going to set a precedent for players now to not want to work out during the off season like what do they have to gain to work out during the off season now if you guys are going to make them lose their money if they get hurt in the off season by because they're working out <laughs> like what that just makes no sense to me and now players we're gonna start if this like you know really becomes this thing like players aren't gonna be working out in the off season anymore they're gonna wait till they have OTAs and they're gonna work out then they're not gonna they're going to sit on their butt and you now we're gonna have a bunch of players actually get more injured because just like we saw this last season when so many players were like not um, uh, really getting the full experience of the season because of COVID and, you know, everything was shortened and in preseason and all of that kind of stuff, too. Um, we saw so many injuries happen last season because of it. It was crazy. So I'm not here for that. I think that's crappy. And um, I don't know if you guys think anything on that because that's crazy. I think he, they need to pay him because now you're gonna open up a whole can of worms about players working out in the off season because now if they potentially get injured during their workouts in the off season, you're going to take away their contract and not pay them. And like Adam Schefter said, this is $20 million on the line here that the Broncos are now talking about not paying this guy because it's the, um, 10 million guaranteed for skill and injury, and then another 10 million for just the 2021 season. So, no, I just can't. I can't. 
Okay, so now let's get to like what I was gonna talk about, which is um, the play-in game. So I posted some, I like, I swear you've never looked bad in any, thank you, because I usually don't wear makeup in most of my videos, so I appreciate you saying that I looked good. Um, what do I think about Justin Fields? I love Justin Fields. I was so sad he went at 11. I thought he should have went higher, but I do think the Bears would be a good match for him. I think he's going to do great there. Um, Bears, you are so lucky. You guys, honestly, you guys wanna, were one of my favorite um, teams this year for the draft. You, I think you guys did a killer job. Top five. Top five teams that did a killer job this draft. You guys did amazing. Um, and I love that you guys kind of waited to see what was going to happen. And then when you realized you needed to take him, you guys took him. So, and traded up perfectly. That that went perfect. Um, so, congratulations to Justin Fields and congratulations to the Bears because that was like dope for both of you guys. Okay. So, um, who did terrible in the draft? Oh, I don't really know. Um, I mean, I thought... I thought the I, I don't think they had a bad draft, but I did, just thought pre-draft to get up to the draft. It was weird that the 49ers did that, you know, got rid of their third and trade, you know, like to trade up to get their third pick or whatever when the guy that they picked, Trey, would have been available at their pick anyway. So it was like weird that they like lost some stuff in the draft to trade up to get Trey when Trey would have been available. That was weird. But anyways, let's get into, I'm going to talk about this play-in game because I commented on like an ESPN um, Instagram this week when LeBron had talked about the, tra the um, play-in game and how he said, and I quote, whoever came up with this ish needs to be fired. So LeBron said that. I commented obviously and said, that that was, I like the playing game. And so then I got a whole list of people talking crap to me about how I feel about the playing game. But I did get a lot of likes. I actually got over like 100 likes on it. So people were feeling me, but some people weren't. But I think, Mamba, thank you for the $19.99. Um, go Cowboys. I loved our pick. Makai is so amazing. I think that was great. Obviously, I technically wanted either one of the um, corners preferably first, um, but I was happy. That was the best pick available. At 10, that was the best pick available. I thought both of the corners were actually still going to be available at that time. They were not, and so the Cowboys did defensively pick the best player, and we, need, we needed our defense, and we built our defense up, I think, in this draft. I don't think we had, like, I wouldn't give us an A. I'd give us, like, a B minus. You know, I, I think there were, I wouldn't put us top five as far as like drafts um, this year, but I think we did great. Um, and I'm excited to see what the Cowboys do this season because we kind of took care of a lot of our big problems. So hopefully, hopefully, you know. But this play in game, everybody went kind of crazy on um, because, of course, all of you guys are bronze sexuals and you just follow everything LeBron says. But can we first. <laughs> break down what the actual playing game means and is because people were debating me and talking to me about like, oh, like they don't wanna, it's a full season though this year and um, the playing game was introduced last year because it wasn't a full season and they needed blah, blah, blah. First of all, this season is not a full season. It's a 72 game season. So we are missing 10 games, just to be clear. It's not a full season, just to be clear. Um, secondly, I like the play-in game idea, especially in this, <laughs> this realm, because people are not even understanding. So, okay, we know one through six is in the tournament, right? They are all there in Clippers Made It. Shout out to Clipper Nation. Um, and then seeds seven, eight, nine, and ten, which normally we would have stopped at eight and the eight people go and everybody else goes home. But now nine and ten are in it. But... The playing game works like this. Seeds seven and eight play each other. Winner is automatically 
the seventh seed. Okay, eight or nine and 10 play each other. The winner of that now plays the loser of the seven and eight one, and then whoever wins from that is the eighth seed. So to be the eighth seed, you either have to win twice or you have to lose, or to not make the eighth seed, you have to lose twice, right? So to me, that's like a good deal. Like if you were, if you were projected to be the eighth seed or seventh seed and you lose against the seventh or eighth seed and then you lose again back to back against the ninth or 10th seed, whoever wins from that game, then you don't deserve to be in it, okay? The, we're talking about back to back loses, but literally for the seventh and eighth seed to not make it, they, ha they would have to lose two games back to back. Like people don't understand that. Like if you lose two games back to back, guess what? You shouldn't be in it, okay? <laughs> like that's fair, okay? We're not saying literally if the seventh and eighth seed, if they lose that game, they're just out and now somebody from the ninth and 10th seed just comes in. No, literally whoever wins that ninth and 10th seed has to win that game and then also has to beat the loser of the seventh and eighth seed one. Come on, you guys. Like, what are you crying about? Like, you, I really feel like people are crying about it because they don't understand it. They didn't understand what the play-in game actually was. But to basically make it simple for you, it is that easy. Like, literally, to not make, if you are seventh or eighth seed right now, to not make the tournament, you have to lose two games in a row. You, you have to lose two games, and that's the only way you don't make it in. So you don't deserve to be there in that case. That's how I feel. Um, so no, it's not a participation trophy to have this play-in game or whatever. And oftentimes than not, you, how many times do, does an A seed win it all anyway? Like, just get over it. I think it makes it more exciting and fun. Um, I love March Madness, and we know every game in March Madness is basically low-key a play-in game because it's one and done. You have one chance to, to you know, move on to the next round and then you're out. Um, but I think it's like, okay, somebody says the 1999 Knicks. 1999. 1999. 1999. What year are we in? 2021? Come on. Um, but somebody said the 9 and 10 seats shouldn't even get a chance with losing records. I think they're really close a lot of times. Um, and if they get a chance and they can win two games, you got to win because they have to win two games in a row in order to get a chance. Um, if they can do that and beat, beat out, you know, this whoever the seventh and eighth seed loser is, take it. And it's fun. You guys don't understand. Like, these games are going to be more fun to watch. Like, I am, I'm not even like a... a like, uh, hello, we, we remember the days where, like, the first round was, like, a five-game series and stuff like that. Like, those are fun. Anyway, like, let's let's get these rolling. Let's get these games out of the way so we can get to the ones that we really want to see. Like, how many people really want to see a one seed play an eighth seed? Not too many times anyway. So we're getting a little a little excited push to lead up to those games because now you have this Cinderella story of whoever wins in these play-in games now playing as the eighth seed or the seventh seed or whatever. I think it's cool. Like, I think it makes the game more exciting. I'm excited to see it. I think it's going to be lit and you guys are just hating and you guys really are just following behind LeBron and LeBron is only saying something because he can potentially be in that spot. Okay, like, let's be real. If LeBron was the number one seed, or a number six seed, guaranteed a six seed, to be clear, um, he wouldn't be having that problem. If they, if the Lakers had already clinched a playoff spot, he would not have a problem, okay? That's all I'm saying. Um, so yeah, you guys can cry about it, whatever you want, get over it. Things, basketball changes all the time. Life changes all the time. I, Tyrone said he wishes they would bring back the five game series for the first round. I do too, you know, like get, let's get rid of these long series in the beginning. And then people were also complaining like, oh, it's not fair. The players had this full season again, full season, 72 games, not 78 or 82. Um, and now they got to play in these play in games. It's max two extra games. Okay. The max is two extra games. Stop it. Stop it. If these players can't play two extra games in really technically a shortened season because it is not a full 82-game season, then I, 
I I'm over it. Like, you guys need to just get over it and stop crying about it. Um, LA Moment said, I don't want the playing game. Why? Why does it affect you so much? If your team is good enough to already make it, then you don't got to worry about it. A seventh and eighth seed is not like, a, you're not the greatest anyway. So get over it, you know? Like, a lot of playoffs don't even include seventh and eighth seeds. So move on. Why is the seven seed up for grabs? The seven seed and the eighth seed, those two teams are just playing each other. So it's literally just one other team that they're competing against for the seventh seed. And like I said already, if that's if the seventh seed loses to the eighth seed, the eighth seed just moves up one spot to the seventh seed, and the seventh seed now has a chance again to still make it to the playoffs by beating the ninth or, t or the winner of the ninth or tenth seed. So if you lose twice, seventh seed maybe <laughs> that's a clear distinction. You shouldn't have been the seventh seed in the first place. Like it's basic math, you guys. <laughs> It's very simple. This isn't like some, it's literally the people that are in seventh and eighth seed literally have to lose twice in order to not make it. They are literally just, hey, you're basically like, you know, in it, you know, just don't F it up, you know? And if they wanna F it up twice, su sucks for that team. I don't have to worry about it because I'm a Clippers fan and my team made it to the playoffs, okay? so. If your team is good enough to make it to the playoffs, you're probably not worried about it. But like I said, LeBron was worried about it because his team can potentially be in that position. But to not make the playoffs, like I said, you would have to lose both of the games. So that's how I feel about it. Um, yeah, and LeBron liked the idea last year. I get it, last year it was a different scenario because COVID, blah, blah, blah. But this is still part of the COVID season. There have still been players that have had to sit out games because of COVID protocols. The season is still considered a shortened season. So yes, they're not physically in a bubble, but they have had to isolate themselves. They have had to get continuous COVID tests. They have had to sit out games because of COVID. Players haven't been able to play certain games. So it is, it's not regular season. It's not the same as a regular season. They started the season in December instead of the end, the last week of October. Like it is different, okay? So except the fact the draft didn't even happen until November, like it is a different year. It is not, so stop complaining about like, well, we're back to normal now. So blah, blah. It, it, we actually aren't and it was not a normal season. So this is why the playing game is still there. I'm just saying if, if it works out this year, I mean, I wouldn't mind it continuing it, but we did know at the beginning of the season that this was a thing. Okay. <laughs> LA moments. Thanks for the 199. Britt, when you, when are you going to start selling merch? I asked you guys to go to my comment section and let me know what you guys wanted to see in merch and nobody said anything. So that's all I'm saying. Um, I'm actually going to Dallas today, guys. So I'm excited for that. Maybe I'll get a job with the Dallas Cowboys. Be their new team reporter or something. That's my dream job, honestly. The Clippers will beat the Lakers. I hope so. You know, Clippers are, we've had a lot of injuries this season, or a lot of, a lot of sit outs for the Clippers this year, and we've still done really good. Um, and I'm excited. I'm excited to watch my Clippers. They've, they've been so, this after that first really big bad came, I think we've been super consistent and we've learned to depend on our bench and stuff more. Um, and I'm happy. Uh, why does it, why do you say I don't look happy? I was just, irritated with the play-in game situation because people just don't even understand you if you don't like the play-in game you just have a team that's possibly going to play in the play-in game um or you just don't understand it because <laughs> that's that's just how it is it's just simple you just don't understand it um but yeah i am actually i'll probably be on here maybe just a couple minutes more um i am going to dallas today my flight's not till later, but I have like a bunch of stuff I have to do before then. So I'll just 
talk to you guys and ask, answer some questions. Derek Smith, what's your ethnicity? I am black and white. Yep, pretty simple. Um, no, do not go Lakers tonight because this is Cl this is Clipper Nation over here, you guys. Clipper Nation, Cowboys Nation, Dodgers Nation, Kings Nation, LA Kings hockey, uh, Sparks Nation, Buckeye Nation for football, Tar Heel Nation for basketball, Fresno State too because that's where I went to college. Um, Best point guard in the league, Dame Lillard. You guys know Dame's my favorite player. Come on now. Come on now. Dame Dalla, that's my favorite player. So, yeah. Um. Okay, we're going to let go of the pandemic P stuff. Okay. Okay. Soccer. I'm not really a soccer fan, honestly. <laughs> it's weird because, like, two of the biggest jobs I've ever had in my life are um for the men's and women's world cup i did with fox sports and i i know the least about soccer you know and i'm like they contacted me to do these stories or these videos for them and i'm like i don't even know about soccer like that um but i mean the u.s women's team they're my jam so that's my that'll be my team the u.s women's soccer team i went and saw them perform a couple times um but in la we have like um, what is it? The Los Angeles Football Club, and we have the LA Galaxy. I actually haven't been to either one of their games, um, but I've been to a Women's Cup, Women's Cup, like their little world tour that they did. I went to one of their games. Where is your wine? It is 11 a.m., okay? <laughs> I actually just have water here, so cheers. Um, and I actually do like cricket a lot. Um, I used to date a really, he actually was a very famous cricket player. I'm not going to say his name because you guys will know who he is if you know anything about cricket. But he's like one of the best cricket players in the world. And um, so I used to like go visit him in places and watch cricket. And cricket is fun. Like the games are long, but cricket's pretty cool. Isn't that a random sport to like, oh, I like cricket, but cricket was cool. Um, early NFL Super Bowl prediction. I'm a Cowboys fan. I'm always going to say the Cowboys are going to win the Super Bowl this year because you know what? One day it will be true. It will be true one day. I don't know. Maybe this year. Uh, Soccer is even better in the right atmosphere, but soccer also has the potential for a lot of bad atmospheres. I've seen so many fights in soccer. It's kind of crazy. Um, 49ers time to shine again. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. I don't think it's their season. I don't think they'll be bad this year, but no. And the, the NFC West is pretty competitive. That was probably one of the most difficult divisions last year. All the teams are relatively good or at the same level together. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see it for, um, I mean, this, the Seahawks, I think probably could win that division. I think the Seahawks might win that division. We'll see. Um, this year is our year, Cowboy Nation, speak it into existence. I speak it into existence every year and one year it'll come true. We'll see there, someone agreed with me, Seattle will win the NFC West. I, I think that that's possibly gonna happen. I don't really like to make too early of predictions because uh, football is just so hard to make predictions in just because of the high injury percentage and rate that happens in the NFL. And literally that could change a whole season for somebody. Ask me, I know I'm a Cowboys fan. Um, and what happened last season with Dak, literally. Last year was our year, guys. No, our, our defense was too bad last year because our, yeah, it was bad. Because the year before, our offense was actually one of the number one ranked offenses in the league, and people forget about that. We were doing really well, and our defense was just trash, but then our defense was trash again last year, so it's fine. It's cool. Somebody said Arizona will win the West. Huh, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not, I don't think so. 
I do think they are improving. I don't think they're going to win NFC West, but they could. Who knows? They could. You think my Bears will win their division? NFC North. Um, well, you know, especially with all the stuff happening with the Packers and um, Aaron Rodgers right now, I I wouldn't put it past them. You know, they could. Um, Vikings were very averagey last year. They weren't terrible, terrible, but they were terrible. You know what I mean? I, mean, I wasn't feeling the Vikings last season. Um, Giants will win the e NFC East. Pfft. No, no, they will not. Okay. Daniel Jones is not taking you guys anywhere. I don't, I should just be quiet. I don't want to say anything. Come to Dallas. We got the best barbecue ribs spread. Christian, did you not hear? I'm coming to Dallas today. I will be in Dallas tonight. So that's why I'm only going to be on here for a couple more minutes because I, I'm pretty much packed, but I got to get my stuff going. I have a couple errands I got to run before I head to the airport, but I will be in Dallas. I will have to find some vegan barbecue though, because I don't eat meat, <laughs> but I did when I went to, um, I went to Kansas City for the um, AFC Championship game two, two years ago, and um, what was I going to say? Well, it was technically two years ago because it wasn't this season, but it was last season um, in beginning of 2020, and um, they had this vegan barbecue sandwich, and it was so amazing. I was so happy that Kansas City had something like that. Um, don't, you know what, don't hate on my life because I'm going to be looking like this when I'm like 80 years old because of my vegan diet. Okay, guys. So don't hate on me. I don't want to pick somebody that the Clippers should face in the first round because I don't like to do that because I just want whoever the Clippers can beat, I want us to that's who I want us to face. And I don't want to say a team and then that team beats us. And then, you know, because as a Clippers fan, I have been very scorned in my life. We have not gotten out of the second round and it has been devastating to me. So um, I don't want to say anything. Okay. I just, I'm just going to watch my game in silence. I'm not going to talk to nobody. Um, are you going to Dallas to watch the fight? No, that's not why I'm going there. Um, I'm not going to see the fight. I'm actually kind of scared because Dallas, y'all don't, Texas don't be like knowing that there's a pandemic. Like tennis or, or Texas is like right behind Florida and like the pandemic didn't exist thing. So being from California and we like super were careful with the, with COVID for the most part in LA anyway, LA County we were, um, I don't know. I'm kind of scared to be around all these people that like don't wear masks and stuff. And I'm, I'm definitely bringing and wearing my Black Lives Matter mask. And I hope somebody wishes they would say something to me about Black Lives Matter. Because I know Texas is way more conservative. In LA, I get so much love when I wear my Black Lives Matter masks. I have like five of them. But people are always like, oh, I love your mask and yada, yada, yada. Um, but when I... I don't know. I've never worn it in like a conservative state before. Are you confident in Paul George? Yes. I feel like he's just mentally been so much better this year. He's just been so good. He's been on this run, you know, and um, somebody said $100, someone will say something to you. You know, they probably will. I have my line that I'm going to say because I think people are going to say like, all lives matter you know, and I'm going to say, yes, that's the goal. And I'm just going to keep on, and I'm going to be like, you have a blessed day. Goodbye. Is that, is that good? You guys tell me what I should say when people say something about my Black Lives Matter mask. Because I'm a nice person now. I used to be like really a brat and mean to people, but in your Karen voice, yes, absolutely. Um, in a game seven series, Lakers or Clippers? I'm saying Clippers, I'm a Clippers fan, what do you mean? Okay guys, well it was great chatting with you guys today. Let me know your thoughts on the play-in game. Um, if you agree with me, if I persuaded you 
to believe that this play-in game is going to be lit. It's going to be fun. Imagine, just picture your March Madness vibes and your excitement that you have during March Madness and get excited, okay? We've, we've had so much sadness and bad stuff in the last year. And you know what? A play-in game is not that big of a deal. That is first world problems to be mad about a play-in game, okay? Get excited about it. It's going to be fun. You're going to watch it anyway. Just have a good time watching it. Just don't sit over there and pout about it, okay? Have fun with it. It's sports. Sports are, be, are supposed to be fun and entertaining. And with all the crap going on in this world, we need some excitement and love and happiness in playing games that I'm excited to watch. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning into this live episode of Running Back with Brit. I appreciate y'all. I love you guys. If you missed the beginning half of the video where I'm debating about some sports topics, make sure you go back and check that out. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Love you guys.